Renee Verrata. I'm the 29th champion of the National Geographic Bee. My journey began a long time ago. Uh, when I was two or three years old, uh, I showed interest in geography. So my parents bought me an atlas and a map of the US that I put together quickly. Uh, that knowledge kept going through my earlier years, and in fourth grade, I finally got to participate in the National Geographic Bee. Uh, I defined my expectations and got second place at the state level that year, kept going, which inspired me to keep trying and try to do better in future competition. Uh, in fifth grade, it was disappointing because uh, I didn't do as well. I lost in the tiebreakers for the top ten at the state level. Uh, in seventh grade, with, the, with more preparation and more experience from having participated in the Bee for the past three years, I made it to 6th place at Nationals, and of course this year I was victorious as a result of that hard work. So this is kind of the hierarchy of what I, would use, what I use to prepare for the bean. Uh, I divided this into more important, medium important, and less important countries to, because each every country is different and not, you shouldn't study the same things for one country as you're doing for another. So, for more important countries, there are obviously more things to study, which include uh, countries, capitals, largest cities, rivers, other bodies of water, uh, land features, national parks, tourist attractions, world heritage sites, bordering countries, administrative divisions, and the capitals of those divisions. And this is in order to show the importance of each topic relative to the other topics. For medium importance, it's sort of similar, except this time bordering countries are more important. I've noticed over the past few years that National Geographic tends to ask, have a round or two about uh, countries that border each other, which are sometimes called sandwich countries. And these are usually with countries of medium importance, like uh, countries that are big, like Mali, but don't necessarily have that many people or aren't as well known as the most important countries like the US or China. For less important countries, it's a lot less because you just have countries, capitals, largest cities, bordering countries, bodies of water, and land features. Uh, why this works, it allows you to focus on what you really need to know. It allows a more efficient distribution of time because uh, when you're studying, there's only, you only have a limited amount of time and you have to find the best way to use that amount of time. And if you're studying what's most important, then you'll be maximizing your time and doing better in the competition. It's also reflective of how geographically diverse countries are because, of course, bigger countries have more things to cover and smaller countries have less things to cover. So if you're covering more, if you're covering more information on the larger countries, then you're going to be better prepared for those countries because they're more important. Also, you have more time to spend on the U.S. The U.S. is by far the most important country in Geography B competition, and it'll make up at least 20% of every competition. So you need to spend a large portion of your time on that on the U.S. So these are some other strategies that I use to prepare for the competition. Uh, I made maps with the information that I gathered by placing each, uh, each place or area that I had covered on the map so I would know where it was in relation to other places that I had covered on the map. And that allowed me to get a kind of sense of where things were uh, relative to the entire country. Also, it's important to quiz yourself because the Geography Bee is a competition where you're being quizzed on what you know. So the only way to prepare for that kind of thing is by quizzing yourself over and over again to make sure you know what you're doing and to make sure that you're remembering the information you've collected. And the only way to remember your information is to read it multiple times because nobody's going to remember everything by just reading it once. And the best way to maximize how much you know and how much you're going to learn is by reading it multiple times to uh, confirm that you know the topic. Also, uh, accuracy is more important than speed. If nobody's going to care if you answer the same, if you, if you can answer questions in three seconds and you're getting half of them wrong. So, uh, accuracy with is very important. So it's important to be thorough in what you're studying because if you don't, if you're not thorough, then you're going, if you're going to get a question on the one thing that you haven't studied, and then you're going to go out as a result. Competition strategies. Uh, you need to go into the competition with the goal of getting every single question right. 
even though you technically do have a lifeline by getting one question wrong, you shouldn't hang on to that lifeline. Instead, you should be trying to get every single question right because that's the best way to ensure that you're going to go into the final round. Uh, once you've answered a question, forget about it and prepare for the next one. So, this is important because if you're focused on the past question, especially if you missed it, then you're going, go, you're going to go to the next one with a sense of still answering that same question and disappointment or whatever you're feeling after that question. So it's important to just forget about it and move on to the next one and focus on, what, focus on the matter at hand. Also, you're not out until you're out. Okay, if you miss one question, you, you, might, have a, you might have more of a chance of going out of the competition but you're still not out of the competition, so it's important to keep trying and not pretend like you're out of you're out of it yet because you still have a chance of surviving. Also, if you don't, if you happen to not know the answer to a question, guess using languages. It's important to know languages because language patterns can sometimes help you uh, guess what country a place is in. For example, in the national round, I got a question about uh, what. Uh, there was a map round and it asked me where the Selvajan Islands were. I didn't know where they were, so I used my long knowledge of languages and Selva sounded like a Portuguese word, so I was successfully able to guess that Selvajans were near Portugal, which allowed me to get the question right. I published uh, the first of a series of books called the Geography Series that consists of the country profiles I used to... <laughs> So in, pre in preparation for the competition, I made a dossier on every single country because that was the only way to make sure I knew every single fact about that country and that I wouldn't miss questions. So this, these books will obviously have the most concise information available because no other source has combined all the information you need for the bee into one source where, all, where everything you need to know is. And uh, the, book is divided into, the book is divided into sections for each country, and then those sections are divided into sections for each topic, like deserts or lakes or volcanoes. So you can study each section one at a time, and it'll contain all the important things you need to know in that section. Uh, thank you for listening to this presentation.